This is Bobby, 1545. And although he might look like Alex, trust me, he's not. And so, this is the story. It all begins not too long ago, in a small, snowy village located on a frozen riverbed. Now, this village was different to most other villages, in that this particular village was the most isolated one in the entire world, as it was right in the center of a massive ice spikes biome, meaning that the nearest signs of civilization outside of that village were tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of blocks away. And thus, those villagers were very isolated from the rest of the world, and therefore, they lived very different lives, as they had to be entirely self-sufficient. And so, for that reason, most days in that village were spent farming for food, or foraging for wood, or spent lighting fires for warmth. So, life was very hard in that village. But still, every villager loved living there, as they could just live peaceful lives without the fear of any illegal invasions, or really any other disruptions. They were free to live their own lives. Or so they all believed, as it was on one snowy night that everything changed. As one villager, whose name was Bobby, got lost during that night, and well, just as luck would have it, it was on that night that a blizzard quickly consumed the entire ice spikes. And so Bobby, being lost in the coldest biome with an ongoing blizzard, began to freeze to death. And there was nothing that he could do about that, as he was just too far away from his village, and there were no other civilizations anywhere nearby. He was doomed. Or so he thought. Because just as Bobby was beginning to give up hope, he saw something in the distance. It was glowing, and it was purple. Bobby was very intrigued, and he knew he was going to die regardless, and so he decided to spend the little remaining energy that he had on investigating this strange purple glow. And so, slowly, he climbed his way across the ice spikes, and was able to get very close to that purple glow, when he realized that the glow was coming from deep within a cave. Bobby was scared, as this was dangerous, very dangerous in fact, as who knows what's down there in that cave. However, at the same time, he knew that he was very close to freezing to death, and so why not take this risk? There was nothing to lose, and so with that, Bobby jumped right into the cave. However, the pitch black aura of that night blinded him from the fact that that cave was merely just a sheer drop. And so with that, he began to rapidly accelerate down to the ground. This was it, he thought. He was just going to die now. However, by some random strand of luck, he survived, as he was somehow able to fall in the only puddle of water in an area that was otherwise deadly dripstone. And so, Bobby quickly jumped out of that water, as it was almost freezing after all, and so it would do no good staying in it. And then, once he got out and understood where he was, he began to walk towards that glowing purple thing. However, before he could get close enough to see what it was, it flew at him quicker than he could blink. And so suddenly, Bobby began to feel as if he was on fire, and his head began to spin uncontrollably, and his world began to shake, and then he began to feel it, waves of power beginning to surge through him, and he gained a sudden understanding of this strange world 
that he lived in, as he realized that it was all just a game, and it was made of code. And then he gained complete admin powers, and then he imploded, becoming nothing more than just a hovering purple soul. And so now that he was in that strange soul-like state, he began to look around that cave, trying to think what he needed to do next when he saw it. It was his body just continuing to stand there, but it was different, as he could see that he was without eyes. This was a very surreal experience, and so he flew over to his body and tried to touch it. However, as he began to do that, time somehow began to rewind, and so he could see his jump, but in reverse. This was weird, very weird, and this just shouldn't happen, and so he tried to stop this. And so to do that, he tried lifting up the opposite arm that he used to touch his body, thinking that the opposite effect should occur. And well, that's exactly what happened, but to a more extreme effect, as it was then that time began to fast forward at a rapid rate. Now, Bobby just didn't want that either, and so he thought about it for a few minutes when he decided to lift up both arms, and thankfully, that worked to slow down time, as it was then that time went back to flowing at a normal rate. This was all very weird, as he had just gained all these strange powers and was now a ghost, and so confused at all of that, he just hovered there for the next few hours, trying to take all of it in. And once he somewhat understood all that had happened to him, then he decided that he needed to return home. And so, to do that, he flew out of that cave, and luckily, that storm was over, and thus, he could clearly see where the village was. And so he was able to fly over to it in just a few minutes. And then he began to talk to the villagers, trying to explain to them what had just happened to him, and he was begging for help. But they just ignored him, as they couldn't see him. And so as he watched village life go on, he was horrified to understand that he was just invisible to them, and so he remained there, not moving for the next few days, watching on as the villagers even began to give a funeral in name of him. They just didn't know that he was right there, watching them. And so because of that, Bobby was soon filled with an overwhelming amount of sorrow and sadness, as he began to think that he would just be forever alone and unacknowledged. But then, he had an idea, as maybe he could rewind time to see what that strange purple thing was that made him this ghost, and perhaps if he could learn about that, then he could find a cure for his current situation. However, before he could actually see this purple thing, he began to receive a message that consumed his every thought. Find a powerful host, and you will live again. And that message just kept on repeating over and over and over again in his head, constantly for the next few hours, and he just couldn't get it out of his mind. And so he decided to just return to that village and begin looking for a host. Now, at first, he tried to possess a villager, as after all, he was a villager, but that just failed. Then he tried to possess a polar bear, but that also failed. And then he tried to possess the strongest horse within that village, but once again, that also failed. Nothing seemed to work, but that was okay, as Bobby knew exactly who might just be a powerful enough host that he could use. As he thought that those villagers that set up this village all those centuries ago could be suitable hosts, as 
They were very strong and powerful. After all, they made their way out here through the perilous ice spikes. And so with that, he began to rewind time. Now, as time was reversing, Bobby found it very interesting to watch the regression of his civilization, to see how life changed within his village over time. But as he was doing that, he saw something that changed his life. As he saw a new being in that village that emerged just over 50 years ago. It was none other than Alex. And so, once he saw her, he stopped rewinding time to go and see what she was doing. As he had never seen her here before. And so, he watched on as she began to cast a spell onto herself. He was very confused as she was turning invisible. But then, once she was gone, when Bobby flew over to where she once was, he could sense her spirits. No other entity was like that. And so maybe, just maybe, she could be his host. And thus, thinking that might work, Bobby began to try to possess her. And well, when he tried to do that, she began to glow, and his world began to shake, and then it worked. He was finally given a physical form. However, he knew that he couldn't be seen here around that village in the form of Alex, as he didn't want to risk causing a paradox to occur within that village. And so, he left that village, going to a place where his actions would have no effect on his home village. And so, with that, he flew out of the ice spikes biome for the first time in his life. And well, when he did that, he was just amazed with what he saw, as he had never seen anything like this before. And so, after witnessing this new world outside of the ice spikes biome, he made a decision to spend the next few decades of his life exploring all these new biomes that he never could have even imagined existing. And so, over the next few decades, he went to deserts, to jungles, to mountains, to coral reefs. He went everywhere. And it was a very nice life, as everything he saw just amazed him. Also, he could once again speak to villagers. Now, Bobby knew that he couldn't actually reveal the true story of why he was exploring the world. And so when he passed through a village, he mainly just traded with the villagers and moved on. Now, that sounds meaningless and rather pointless, but this was a major improvement for Bobby as he was just finally able to speak to someone else and was no longer lonely. And that made him very happy. But then, one day, just as he was leaving a desert village, he heard something. It was the sound of villagers screaming. And so Bobby ran right back into the village to see what it was. And well, it was none other than the illagers, as they had just raided that village and killed all of the villagers. And so seeing this, Bobby was suddenly filled with rage and was very angry as what were the illagers and why were they killing the villagers so brutally? But really, he just didn't care as all he saw was red and he wanted to avenge those fallen villagers and so he lunged into an attack which was very easy for him, as after all, he had admin powers, and so he could duplicate himself, and could slow down time, and thus, with those two powers working in combination, he was able to kill all of the illagers in mere nanoseconds. And so, it was after that point that he made a decision from that moment onwards that he would hunt down every single illager and kill them all. 
as they were clearly evil monsters intent on hurting innocent villagers. And so, it was then that he began his travels across the world, visiting thousands of pillager outposts and thousands of woodland mansions, all so that he could kill millions of those demonic illagers. And so soon, legends would begin to spread of Bobby. Not just for his impressive attacks on the illagers, but also for the fact that no one had ever seen Bobby during any of these attacks, as he was just too fast. And so the only thing that they ever saw were his shadows. And well, as he seemed to have 1,545 shadows in each of his attacks, they soon gave him the name the Soldier of 1,545 Shadows. But over time, some villagers somehow learned that these duplicates all called themselves Bobby. And so for that reason, they renamed these legends to just Bobby 1545. And so it didn't take too long before villagers all over the world knew of Bobby 1545. And they were all very grateful for him. In fact, some even began to leave out blessings for Bobby 1545, as they would leave out blue orchids and frog lights by their front door to show their appreciation for him. And so really, all was good for Bobby 1545, as he was fighting for a cause that he believed was righteous, and the villagers were happy as millions of their lives were being saved due to him. However, at the same time, due to his impactful presence that he had in the world, Bobby1545 soon became known to the illagers. And well, they weren't happy. But there was nothing they could do to stop him, as he was just slaughtering them. And so many illagers began to spend their days begging for help from the lead evokers. But once again, there was nothing really that they could do to stop him, as Bobby1545 was just too powerful and his attacks were unavoidable. However, soon that would change, as on one raid, one evoker is spared his life, as he is not seen by Bobby 1545 or any of his clones. And so because of that, he learned the ways that Bobby was able to carry out these brutal attacks. That being that he would slow down time and then summon an army of duplicates. He also saw that the illagers whom were fighting with their full might and power were unable to kill him or any of the duplicates. In fact, they weren't even able to damage them. And so, luckily, as the evoker was able to remain hidden from the army, once they left, he became the first recorded illager to ever survive a Bobby attack. And so, after that, he then returned to the Woodland Mansion, and he told his story to all the illagers. And well, they were shocked to hear this. But, it was amazing, as now they could start planning their counter-attacks. And so, in absolute secret, the smartest illagers within the world began to work on a potion that would specifically target Bobby's weaknesses, as they needed to create something that would hurt an immortal time traveller, even if they went back in time. And so those villagers spent years working on this, spending every single day experimenting with dark magical spells, with many failed attempts, all so that they could create that potion. And well, after a few years, they would finally create it. Now, this potion was dark orange, and it had all the effects that they needed, as it was incurable, 
and deadly, meaning that once an entity was hit by it, well, then they would be doomed to die. It was perfect, and so those potions were then distributed to illagers all over the world, all in preparation for the next Bobby 1545 attack. Well, just a few days later, when Bobby 1545 invaded the Woodland Mansion, he was hit by that potion. Now, Bobby 1545 didn't think much of it, but really, this was the beginning of his end. And so Bobby, 1545, not realising the danger that he was in, continued on with his invasion, and was able to kill the rest of that woodland mansion, and was able to move on to the next target. However, just a few days later, his skin began to rip apart, and blood began to flow out of it. It was very painful. Bobby1545 looked into the past to see what this was happening. And so it was then that he saw that all of this was happening due to that dark orange potion. And so he rewound time to try and stop that illager from creating this potion. But there was no use, as the illagers truly had perfected this potion. And so there was no cure for it. He was stuck with it. And thus... He was doomed. But no, this should really be okay, as he should be able to heal from this slight skin tear over time, as surely the illagers couldn't have created such a perfected potion, it must run out eventually. And so, believing that, he began to look into the future to see how he coped with this potion, and what he did to fix it. However, when he did that, he saw something that horrified him, as he saw that he was going to die from this, as he saw his world going dark. This was very hard to accept, and so to begin with, he was just in denial of it all, and just decided to continue fighting the illagers. However, after a few months, the pain began to grow and grow, to the point where his skin began to tear apart even more, and his eyes began to shrivel away into nothingness. And so this meant that he could no longer fight the illagers, and thus, it was also then that he began to accept his mortality. And he was just grateful for the impact that he was able to make on the world this far. But then, just as he was walking forwards, ready to relax for the remainder of the short days that he had left, he began to see something. It was a vision of the far, far future. He was seeing another being. It was Steve. And he was working with another being as well. It was Alex his host, and together they were building something, and it just looked beautiful and amazing. That was nice, he thought. But then all of a sudden, the Alex transformed into his broken skin host. Bobby1545 was shocked as why was he there in that vision? And then he saw endless suffering consuming the world after he arrived. And then he heard the words, This is the future, and it's all your fault. This is the future, and that phrase and it's repeated over and over future, and over in his head, and, and he couldn't get that message out of his mind. And, and so Bobby1545 was horrified at all this, as he just didn't want the world to burn and suffer. But at the same time, what could he do? As he was just in so much pain right now, and could barely do anything anymore. But he had to change this. He had to help the future world. And so he stood there, and thought, and thought about it. And it took him a few hours, when he finally came up with an idea. As maybe he could rewind time, and stop his past self from ever going in that cave. As 
if he never became this monster, then he wouldn't be dooming the world right now. And so Bobby, 1545, teleported back to that stormy night, and he blocked off that cave, meaning his past self would never see that purple glow that led him into becoming Bobby, 1545. However, this resulted in his past self dying in that blizzard. And well, that caused a paradox to occur. As if his actions resulted in the death of his past self, then that would mean that he would never be able to go back in time, and thus would never be able to kill himself. And thus, he should still be alive. But if he was still alive, then his past self would then die. And so, it just wouldn't make any sense. He had broken their universe. But luckily, this was mainly just contained to himself. But then, all of a sudden, he began to have another vision. He could see Steve and Alex, and once again, they were thriving. This was great, he thought. He saved the world, even if it did cause a paradox of endless suffering for himself. But not so fast, as Alex suddenly disappeared. And then, once again, the universe went back into endless suffering. She will never exist because of you. And then, just as before, that phrase repeated in his head over and over and over and consumed his every thought. And well, this was bad, very bad, as he was about to cause the deaths of trillions of innocent lives. And Bobby1545 just didn't know what to do to fix that, as he didn't want to cause yet another paradox, which would lead to even more suffering. He was just completely defeated. But then he began to think more logically, as if he just didn't exist anymore, that was okay, the world would carry on as normal. But if Alex didn't exist anymore, that was bad, and the world would suffer endlessly. And so he began to think that he just needed to focus on creating Alex in the world again, even if that meant his own demise. And so, understanding that, Bobby, 1545, began to rewind time back to the era when Alex was created. And well, as Alex didn't exist anymore, he had to recreate her from scratch. And so to do that, he decided to summon a Steve from the air. Now the reason for that was that if he had a Steve, then he would have a new host, and Alex, his current host, could be freed. And thus, if she was out in the world, then effectively she would be recreated within the world, and therefore, the end of suffering would not consume the universe. Now, that all sounded good, and very simple, but it wasn't as easy as it sounded, as this was actually very hard to do, even for Bobby, 1545, using all of his admin powers, as summoning a Steve took quite some effort. And so, because of that, Bobby was only able to slowly drag one Steve into existence. And he knew that if anyone or anything disturbed him, then the entire plan would be ruined and the universe would go back to eternal suffering. And so the pressure was on and the entire world, if not the entire universe, depended on him. But then... Just as luck would have it, that Steve that he was summoning began to glow in a bright blue hue. And thus, just a few minutes later, an evoker was attracted to that light. And thus, everything changed. And so, to find out what happened next, then you'll need to watch this video.